All right, hey folks, welcome back to another video. I'm here with Kira, and she brought a horse that uh, you're having some issues with her bucking. She bucks during random times because she's normally a pretty mellow horse. And she's done this multiple times? Yes, at least three times. So the first time was on a trail ride. That was February, that was the first okay. one. And then she did it again in May when we tried to ride double. And unfortunately, that was with my kiddo. We initially thought, you know, just don't ride double, but then now she's been doing it when you go to mount, but she's so mellow, it's, it kind of I'm finding it hard to read her. Kind of, yeah, it feels yeah. kind of like a surprise when it when it happens. Yes. Okay. Well, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll take her and kind of test out a few things on the ground and her sensitivity level to certain things, and uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Uh, we'll get started with her here. Um, I'm just going to put her through some of her paces on the ground and go through my pre-ride checklist. You know, mm -hmm. as you know from watching the videos and stuff, I'm not just going to see if I can be a better bronc rider. Mm -mm. Um, you know, it's about training her because usually when they're bucking, there's there's something that either physically could be making them uncomfortable, but usually it's some sort of behavior thing where they're not understanding what's going on or they're getting afraid, you know, something like that. Yes. Um, and so we're just going to see what we can kind of find out and we're going to test a few confidence things. We're going to test a few kind of yielding things because um, horses can kind of buck to protest something or they can uh, buck because they got scared. She seems pretty sweet right off the bat. She is super sweet. Good first impressions. <laughs> She's cute. When I'm evaluating, unless I find a real significant problem, I go through things fairly quickly because I'm not necessarily in this session, you know, here to fix a bunch of things. Um, I'm, I'm mostly trying to trying to understand her and so I have to put her in a few different scenarios you know to kind of find out um, and when was the last time you guys rode her or the last time she's been ridden uh, a couple weeks ago and that ride was successful yes nothing bad but we stayed in the do you, do you feel like you've been being like more careful with her mm -hmm. since the incidents yes and then in what ways have you been being more careful staying in the arena um waiting till she's pretty calm before getting on yeah using the mounting block instead of trying to mount from the ground do you do more groundwork with her now before you ride yes So she's passing everything really well. The only thing is, you know, the only observation I can make right now is she's kind of got her head up high and a little bit of a braced body position. So I'd like to get her just a little bit more relaxed, but that's, that's probably more of a habit that she's just kind of used to moving that way. I don't get the impression she's all that nervous here. Hey, would you guys like to see more detailed training videos that show you step-by-step -step how to train your horse and work through common issues? We have a huge video library on my Patreon page, as well as dropping new videos every week. You can also send me a message on there and get questions answered about your horse. You can even send videos for me to coach. So it's a really great value at just $10 a month. Next January, it's gonna go up to $20 a month for all that. So if you wanna get in now for $10, make sure you get signed up, and I'll look forward to seeing you on there. Now, one of the things that they mentioned to me is that um, she's having an issue with if the rider touches her wrong on her side here, uh, when they go to step on, that that can cause her to buck right away. So one of the things that, if you guys have been watching my videos, you know I'm big on, is getting the horse to bend their ribs around. I, do you feel, see how she's kind of blocking there? She's, she, she should kind of walk a circle around me and she's kind of just straight with her ribs in. And so, uh, uh, normally I do that to help a horse be more relaxed and I'd like her to relax a little bit because she's kind of got her head up but I also want to test that area out a little bit and find out is she bothered if I tap her with the stick does that set her off does she get really agitated um, with that or, or you know other things I was also noticing because horses can be touchy there with if they have ulcers and so off camera I brushed her off here before we started and I didn't notice any extra sensitivity to that. You know, she let me brush her and touch her everywhere and wasn't offended by that. So, um, and then you also mentioned you guys don't use a back cinch when you ride her. And my saddle does have a back cinch. So that'll be one thing that she'll have to kind of get used to, but it's kind of a good test to see how quickly they get comfortable with those things. Yes. 
But for homework, the only thing I'd give you so far is I'd like to see you get her ribs bending around you a little bit more. Be a little bit more picky about that when okay. you're circling her. And then that should lead to, that should lead to the head lowering, the head coming down a little bit. Okay. There. So I kind of just got a little start of it for you. <laughs> Nothing much there. But I, I would definitely work on that a little bit. Because the, the reason I'm so picky about that is because it's natural for a horse to be in a defensive posture there. And so when they have the ribs there, all horses do that innately. And if they don't do that, it's because somebody took the time to teach them not to do that. And any horse will go back to doing that if they feel nervous or defensive. And so that's a real quick way to find out how willing she is to turn loose to you, to you basically, you know, to the positions you're putting her in. Now this one is, so those are a bunch of yields. The stick and the flag is a little more of a sensory thing. It's like, you know, does she get real bothered by things moving, you know, and she's, she's a little bit sensitive, um, but not bad. But if she will react to this flag doing this, it doesn't necessarily surprise me that she would also react to somebody just popping on as a second rider. <laughs> you know, I was telling you before we got started filming that most horses would object to a second rider because of it being behind the saddle that area of their back is pretty sensitive mm -hmm. um, and you're, the rider's legs end up being right by the horse's flank so that whole area in general is more sensitive than the regular riding position so it doesn't mean they couldn't do that for a short period of time but um, I would expect most horses to need a little preparation there And you could, prep, you could prepare that a little bit by putting a rope there and pulling on it and releasing it and just making sure they're okay. You know, having the rider kind of lay over there a little bit or, you know, just some different things to kind of check that out. Mm -hmm. She seems pretty good with the flag, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that. Again, we're, te we're testing things and, and she, so far I'm not finding anything real out of the ordinary. Now one of my favorite tools, as you guys know, is the lariat rope. Even this, so this step out of all, everything I've done, this would help her be prepared for that rider being in that position. You know, it's like, yes. it would just test that out a little bit. You'd be amazed at how many horses get real goosey, you know, about things being around their hind end. And it, you know, it, it doesn't mean that their hind end is more sensitive than their front end. It's just that most horses get more handling up here in the front than they do in the back. And so I just try to deliberately do some things where I'm, I'm handling them back there. <laughs> See? There it is. <laughs> And so for, a, for an older horse that is kind of a kid's horse, you know, I, I would expect them to be okay with this. Again, not, not that, I would expect any horse to have to learn to be okay with this. But this is some of the colt starting preparation work that I do. And so again, if she's gonna buck with this, then I would definitely not be surprised that she would buck with, with a second rider on. Because this rope is, a lot less pressure than a second rider being back there. So what I'm wanting her to do is, it looks like I'm pulling on it, because I am, but I'm not wanting her to give to it, I'm wanting her to wear it. I want her to just be okay with that, that back there. So we kind of found a little hole there. Now I'll just test it on a hind leg. So that was great response. Most horses would be more troubled about what I just did versus that part on her back. So the, it's interesting that she's sensitive to that. And again, these are just little tests that I do on most any horse before I ride them. But again, most people are bringing me horses that are having some challenges. You know, they haven't been ridden or not very successfully. Um, it's not like I do this with every horse I ride before I bring them out, just new horses. Because you can see, I don't know, we've been at this for 10 minutes or something, we you find out a lot very quickly with just a few of those tests. The yields with the stick and string, the sensory stuff with the flag, and then the lariat rope. And again, I have a YouTube short video that is uh, Tom Dorrance's quote where he's, he talks about there not being a bad place on a horse to hang a rope. And all that means is it's just good to take the time to get them used to Take the time to get them used to wearing ropes all over the place because it was just touching her you know it's not it wasn't mm -hmm. pulling on her and this is a very soft rope so so since we had a little trouble there we'll go ahead and put this on the
So that's a much more reasonable, she got a little worried by it, but she didn't decide to say, I'm gonna try to save myself here and start bucking and kicking, you know. So you said I didn't take much time to get her used to it, but it was enough of a reaction that if, if there was more pressure involved, you know, with the saddles and rider, it could get worse. Because we did get a reaction there, I think I'm also gonna work on uh, this rope being around her barrel just a little bit. Again, in the spirit of there's not a bad place on a horse to hang a rope. So she is pretty sensitive back there, obviously. There we go. And you know, based on everything you told me, to me it was, I was pretty sure, you know, this is, so I want her to not come over top of me here if I have this going. But I wanna teach her to wear it and not, not buck with it. And there's, I mean, I got two fingers on it here. I'm not pulling on it very hard, but it is, the, the further back you go, there's a reason I didn't put it right here. This is less sensitive than from here back. This is the most sensitive. And so I haven't really gotten any further back there to where it's fully a flank rope. I'm more using it kind of where the back cinch would be mm -hmm. and asking her to get okay with it being here. And you can see she's wanting to stop. And when you're colt starting or if you're working with a horse that wants to buck with this, it's real important that they find relief moving. Just moving out, wearing it. Cause bucking is like, is also like they feel a little bit trapped or like they can't move. And so by releasing her on forward movement, it's like she's understanding, oh, I can still move with this. I'm not stuck anywhere. Um, Cause them feeling claustrophobic, you know, that's the same, same place they feel, um, you know, why like on that trail ride or having the rider on her back they, all those things could have evoked the same feeling of feeling claustrophobic. And that's what causes them to need to like, kind of fight their way out of something. So I really think that that'll make a big difference. And I, I, I get the impression from her, she was a little bit sensitive there, but I feel like it was a little more lack of preparation there. Like she could have learned that, you know, when she was a two year old getting started or a three year old. Um, and, and because she got over it very quickly, that's why I feel like it was more lack of doing it versus like, oh, she's really worried about this particular area. Okay. Um, it was more of like, oh, we just needed to. Now see, that's interesting. She is pretty sensitive. Kind of more sensitive than she kind of looks at first. Yes. You know, for a horse that's been ridden for many years. And I'm being purposefully lackadaisical. <laughs> like I'm deliberately just kind of f throwing things up there and moving around her because I'm trying to expose some of these things. If I were to try to be really slick and smooth, it could very easily turn into being sneaky and sneaking the pad on her and sneaking the saddle on and sneaking a ride on. And then she's okay with me as long as I'm being really careful. But the second somebody isn't really careful, then blah. And so there's a balance between, you don't want to be rude to a horse, but I don't, I, I wanna be obvious to her. And that's what I'm trying to do with this stuff is I'm trying to be obvious. And most horses are saddled on the left side. And so I like to saddle them on the right side. If I don't know the horse to kind of see what their response is, um, you know, or get them used to it if they're not used to it. But yeah, I can see, kind of see why you're running into some trouble here because it doesn't take that much to, to bother her. Yeah. But I also, and I, I'm getting the impression that it wouldn't take that much to get her over it either. Have you tried to do any of the things that I'm doing with her? Or have you not stretched the envelope that far? I am I was worried about trying the lariat rope just because I don't want to Yeah, you mess don't want to. Yeah, you're trying to be, be careful with things. Good, but I think you're going to want to do this like another, especially like tomorrow, like a few days in a row. Oh, okay. And it would make a big difference. And then I would do it, revisit it again, especially the rope around her butt. if. 
she sits for a while. You know, it's like winter's coming up here and a lot of times we don't ride as much. So if she sits for a while, plan on doing a day or two of preparation before you start doing a trail ride or a, a more of a regular ride with her. Okay. Again, those are the preliminary analysis here, but given the fact that you said you've already been riding her lately, um, you know, so it, it, it's like it couldn't have been that bad that it was like every time I get on, she blows up. It no. was more like there was just a few scenarios that were too much for her. But what I would rather do is be prepared than lucky, you know. And so what that means to me is I want to test her on these things when things are going well, like today. Like things are going well. There's no there's no big got to thing that we got to do right now. We're not trying to do a trail ride. We're not trying to do a show or anything like that. Uh, we get to test her and expose some of those things now and that's a foreign concept to a lot of people a lot of people are like well why would I want to like bother my horse if things are going well and it's because <laughs> it's like you want to build depth of understanding and preparation so that things will go well in difficult situations because you can't expose a horse to everything there is for them to get afraid of um, and so what we can do though is in other words if you just try the opposite approach and you try to just be really careful around them all the time Eventually, something out of your control, like what happened on the trail ride, because you could go, well, we won't ride double. It's like, okay, that, maybe that'll help. But then it happened on the trail ride too, and nobody's riding double at that point. Right. So then you go, oh, well, there's some pretty low tolerances here if, if all it takes is something on a trail ride coming up and she gets, thinks she's got to go to pitching. Um, and so we can raise those tolerances and those thresholds by exposing her to some of these things. And, and normally, when, you know, when she is exposed to this three days from now, you wouldn't even get any reaction from putting the ropes on them there. Okay. And then you go, oh, now, now there's higher tolerances. Again, this is theoretical at this point, but usually this is how it works. So she, again, the back cinch is kind of new to her. It's not on tight. It, um, I don't know if you can see, there's, I can pull it away. There's plenty of room there. Um, but she might, because she bucked with the rope, the rope was right there. She probably will react to it a little bit. Again, because you mentioned how she gets uh, goosey with uh, something touching her sides. One of the colt starting preparation checks that I do, make sure I get this all organized here, is I'll attach uh, this to my stirrup. And now from a distance, I can just swing a stirrup. You've seen this one already? Yes. Have you done this you, one with I've her? I've tried it, yes. Oh, good. Did she did she freak out at all with it? In the, in, at first, but yeah, got better. Okay. Did you do it on both sides? Like you put this over yeah. there from yes. here? Perfect, you're on it. So for a cold, this is kind of exposing them to the rider's legs being noisy. And again, hopefully the rider's legs are not that noisy. It's the, the attitude of we'd rather try to prepare the way a little bit. And she's handling that just fine. There's zero, zero reaction. So now I'm gonna keep it attached to that same side. She's got a little habit of crowding the person here. Yes. And so I'm gonna wanna, another thing I'll ask you to do is kind of set that boundary a little bit more with your stick. Okay. Um, whether it's a flag or the stick, but she just she kind of her go-to is to kind of smother the, the human a little bit And that is for her to find relief So she gets relief coming into you off the circle, but she needs to kind of get okay with things out there a little bit more Good So she no problem there So again when I don't find any issues, I don't stick around there for a long time There's not really anything there to work on. Let's go ahead and test this side now Like you can see, it was right there under the surface. All we had to do was add canter mm -hmm. to it. I don't like that she wants to crowd me though, when you should get scared. So because of the cinch, I would say she was bucking mostly because of the cinch, not the stirrup. But the stirrup, <clears throat> But you can see where we, we, when push comes to shove there, there's a little bit of a hole there for her not stepping off. We're gonna stay here a little bit until it gets a little better. But yeah, you can see with just running some of these tests, it didn't, we didn't have to, 
searched real hard <laughs> before we found some holes that would easily be safety issues if something similar came up while you were trying to ride her. Her default is she's gonna start to panic and go to bucking. So we have to teach her how to recover and how to think through some pressure. And that's where I'm challenging her when she gets stuck to kind of work through that pressure. And now I'm gonna work on a little bit of training now that I've gotten to know her a little bit. I wanna work on her stepping her front end over and staying out of your space a little bit. So this is now not part of the evaluation. This is part of trying to help her leave her in a better spot. But to me, after I put her through these tests, the story all comes together. It's like, was it what happened on the trail? Or why was it just having a second rider? Or why was it with the strip? Those are all kind of isolated incidents, you know? And then when you look at this, you go, oh, she feels claustrophobic. She's still emotional at canter. So anything happening with a little bit of intensity. So when, when I say things happen at, let's say cantering is a six out of 10 intensity for her. Well, guess what? that trail ride was became more than a six out of ten it became like a seven out of ten intensity in whatever way so that's why it was too much the cantering with no stirrup here or with me not moving the stirrup was fine but once i added the stirrup now it went from a six to a seven right now it's too much that's that threshold line where now she's going to buck and so those incidents were all like themed around her being sensitive around her barrel and hindquarters there we go now she's getting relief and she's getting relief with me in the right eye. So when you're, when you're playing, doing the groundwork with her, make sure you release her in this position. But does that make sense? Yes. Like all those incidents just were above that threshold line. And I'm gonna leave the halter on in case I have to step off of her and do some groundwork. If things get too, a little too Western as they say, which hopefully they won't, but we'd rather be prepared. And again, if she, if she was here in training, I wouldn't feel like I need to get on her and like test a bunch of things on her saddle. Like even that would be a fine session, just put her away, you know, put her away there, or at least get on her, walk her around or something. Um, but because you've, you've made all the effort to get here, I wanna be thorough about checking everything. And so this is a little bit different than just a regular training session because we're kind of doing an evaluation, wanna find out where everything's at. But there would be nothing wrong with just doing some of that prep work and then just leave it, you know, get, she's real settled now, the head's coming down, her eyes are getting softer. Um, you know, there'd be nothing wrong with just checking those things out. I'm not feeling any stirrup. Okay. Bucking situation. I, I, you know, I think she was just being a little sensitive. I'm kind of surprised she does still feel pretty tight, even after that big release. And because part of what I'm doing in my head is I'm trying to figure out: Do you guys need to get some tra professional training on her for a little bit before it's real safe, or is this something you can go home, do some of these steps, and work through? You know, because safety is to me the line of. I, you know, if, if somebody's got the time, it's like I'd like to see somebody else learn how to train train the horse, but I don't want them to get hurt in the process. And we are started off on the line of like, you guys could do all this yourself. And now I'm leaning a little bit towards, might be good to have a professional put some time riding or, you know, walk, trot, canter a little bit. Um, I agree. But I kind of feel like I got to stick my legs off her because my legs touch her, you know, she's going to be pretty sensitive. And I'm already convinced at this point in the ride that a professional needs to be the one riding her you know just because of it it feels like i could if i made a little mistake she would she would blow up and go to bucking and i'd have to be strong enough to to bend her and shut her down and that kind of surprises me with how gentle she seemed at first but you know um <clears throat> it just doesn't seem like there's very high tolerances here and you see how high headed she is you know she's pretty braced braced up yes like even me, after this ride, I would be in a round bend <laughs> next time I ride because I, I, you know, I feel like I'd be counting on being able to stop her with my reins if she got bothered. And if you're in a round pen, the round pen kind of helps you out there. But you know, I, it's like, well, if you're 
your daughter wrote, wrote her, you know, two weeks ago, <laughs> like, just ride her out here, but she does feel like she might be ready to blow. And you can see when I go to turn her, she's real straight and stiff. And one of the things that I would be working on with her is like trot her out and then ask her to do this relaxed rain circle and just get her bending. And feels like you guys kind of been starting that. Yes. Oh, thought she was gonna blow out there. She's trying to get soft here. There we go. And now I can put my legs on her without her going kind of like, like tensing up, like hulk, hulking out. <laughs> so under saddle, it just feels like she needs to get more comfortable with these positions, like bending her ribs. And she kind of just is in a habit of, she kind of gets tight and is, she's probably been ridden a lot where she was kind of tolerating things until it was too much. And, and she really, the rest of the time, really probably wasn't as relaxed as you guys thought she was, is the way I'm, I'm feel, feeling it. And that's based on where she's putting her ribs and how high her head is and how hard it is to kind of get her to blow out. So she just needs like a lot of approach and retreat. Like there we approach a little bit of speed, then recover. Bend her down, ask her to get soft again. There we go. So can you kind of see her getting looser here as we go? Yes. Like she didn't blow up when I first got on her, but she tensed up, you know, and you kind of go back to where her head looked and her, she's blinking more. Her ears are alternating between thinking about me, her head, you see her head stretching down. I'm not teaching her to put her head down, but she's, as she's relaxing, her head is naturally getting lower. So I, I don't think she needs a ton of work. I just think there's a few little holes here that could get worked out by a professional with less risk to, you know. I mean, a month at a trainer's like, I don't know what, 1,500, 2,000 bucks for a, good, for a good one, you know. I'm sure there's somebody that'll do it cheaper. But uh, shoot, with medical bills these days, one trip to the ER to get an x-ray is a few grand at least. And again, you can see by how she turns, she turns with like this ridge in her body. And that's what tells me that we need to recover before we proceed. So when she gets relaxed, that's when I ask her for more. When she gets tight, that's when you see me bending her down and recovering. Because again, it's, it's not like she's being bad, like she's be punished. It's just, we, we need to help her get more comfortable accepting these things. I was hoping she'd blow out again. Let me just, couple, I think we're close. I, I'm waiting, I feel like she needs to just have one more release. And so what I'm doing is just kind of swinging it, bringing her life up, bringing it back down and hoping that she'll kind of recover. There it is. <laughs> On cue too. She's like, oh, he's gonna keep cantering me till I breathe. <laughs> See, when they're, when they're tense through their ribs, that ridge that I was saying I'm feeling, that's them holding their breath. And they're, they're staying tense. It's like, if you work out, there's a time to exhale and a time to inhale and a time to just hold it, you know, and like, just, you know, follow through with the lift. So when you're doing so, when you're about to do something really physical, you, you engage your whole core and everything. Well, horses stay there. And that's what she's tending to do even now. There she's coming out of it with her ears. So she's pretty introverted about it, which is also why I was a little bit misled by her. You know, I was wanting to listen to her. I'm like, she's pretty quiet. And then you fiddle around a little bit and you find out um, that, you know, she's not quite, she was more like what you're saying. <laughs> not quite as quiet as meets the eye. <clears throat> um, but when you can get them to bend their ribs and that relaxed rain, that's why it's truly a recovery strategy. Get them to breathe. And that's why it was also important to do a little cantering because that cantering, when they're moving their feet that much, they gotta breathe. And so that's kind of what led to this. So if you're not cantering her, walk and trot, she could stay in that tense mindset. Even if I had gotten off of her before she did this, I would have still left her in a little bit of a tighter position. She's in a much better frame of mind at this second than a minute ago, you know what I mean? Okay. So, so I'm very happy with how well she progressed that training session. I think she's gonna be just fine. 
I would like to see if it's possible to get a, a month, a month of training with somebody who knows what they're doing that can just spend a little more time loping her around under saddle, can do some of the prep work. On, I think you could probably do a lot of the prep work on the ground, but I think somebody that's a professional needs to ride her and, and spend a little time with that canter. I think that would make a big difference for her. That would be my recommendation. So yeah, tell me, what, first of all, what's your impressions of that session and anything you, uh, what do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Um, it was great. I learned, I learned a little bit more about her sensitivity to pressure and her claustrophobic from the lariat rope and I think even the back cinch, which is why I was scared to try one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and her resistance to relaxing and flexing and <laughs> the groundwork for sure. I'm ever since being bucked off a couple times, you get a little leery about doing saddle work yep. <laughs> and pushing the envelope, I guess. So, yep, definitely. Um, you feel like you'll be able to get your confidence back with her again if she had some professional rides? I believe so, yeah. And then? Yeah, I especially mean, if you could go ride, them, ride her there with them a little bit? Yeah, with some guidance, yeah, yep. for sure. Super. And again, it doesn't mean you have to canter her under saddle. You could walk trot. I just think she needs somebody yeah. to canter her for a little bit. <laughs> well, thank you so much for bringing her out, and thanks for letting us put this out there to everybody to see. But uh, these kind of videos help a lot of people um, know how to troubleshoot their horses and which way they should go with them. So thank you for yeah. being willing to, to let us post it. Thanks for having and, uh, us. And thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next one.